thank you again for, for the opportunity to um, have this discussion today. I really feel like uh, TJ's presentation on matchmaking, matchmaking was very, very well done. Um, and it's a great segue to our conversation today. Um, and I say that because earlier this year, State Farm hosted uh, a virtual matchmaking event. It was our second annual virtual matchmaking event. And we targeted internal business areas with spend opportunities. So we had 67 competitive diverse suppliers invited to pitch their capabilities to 13 of our business areas. And we really did that because as TJ talked about um, earlier, sometimes we are just the um, gatekeepers, and but we wanted the opportunity to bring the actual business to the business, the, bring the actual vendor to the business area that's actually buying or procuring that goods and service so they could really dig deep and ask the questions that were really meaningful to them. Um, the event was a great success. Um, we're happy to say we procured two keynote speakers that were referred to us by NGLCC for our opening and closing ceremony. Um, shout out to Jonathan Hart, owner and design director of Big Mouth, and Jason Marmaclay, owner of Think Quick Events. They did a fabulous job. But then on top of that, we're very, very excited to announce that we procured or secured a contract with one of our panelists today, um, Sherry Matthews, owner of Print Solutions. And um, we're just going to use this time to talk up to Sherry about her experience from participating in the matchmaking event to being awarded a contract with State Farm. So with that, um, with matchmaking events being in person and virtually, Sherry, a common practice for diverse vendors to connect with businesses is through matchmaking. And can you provide us any tips on how you prepared for the State Farm matchmaking event, maybe in general, how people can prepare for the matchmaking event um, through this conference tomorrow? Anything that you could give to the audience? Yeah, so um, matchmaking is very, very important. Um, if you can participate in any matchmaking event with a company, do it because you have the eyes and ears of that company right then. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to say. You know, it's important. We're divert. We're we have a double certification in women business and NGLCC, so we attend both conferences, both national conferences every year. We attend the WeBank conference and we attend the NGLCC conference. And I think it's important because a lot of the corporates are at both of the conferences and you kind of get to know um, both of them, you kind of see them, you talk to them, and then they have a matchmaking event and that is your time to be one-on-one -on -one with them. So when we were invited to the State Farm matchmaking event, um, we didn't think twice about it. We're like, yes, we're right in their backyard. You know, they're a great company. We've been talking to them for a couple of years. Let's, 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 you know, be involved. So when State Farm reached out and they said that they had some business units, I was a little surprised that there were so many on the call from State Farm. And I think one of the things that I want to say is if, if you're going to be talking to the corporations through these matchmaking events, the biggest thing that you want to do is you want to be authentic. You want to be truthful. You want to talk about your business. Um, you want to talk about your strengths and your weaknesses. And you want to kind of lay all your cards out on the table because really it's the only time that you are going to get your say in front of all of them at one time. So I, I would say that was that's probably the most important thing. And thank you for that. I heard you say that you had been um, trying to get with State Farm for a few years. So it kind of goes back to what TJ had mentioned that, you know, just from the very first contact, you're not always awarded a, you know, a business, but what were you doing um, in those two years to try to stay in contact with State Farm? Well, I, I kind of have a different philosophy. I'm not a, um, you know, just keep hounding, hounding, hounding corporations. The biggest thing is meeting the corporations, whether it's State Farm or anybody else, um, meeting them at the conference, talking to them. You might not even talk about business. You could talk about something completely different because I'm a firm believer that if you have a connection with somebody then and they like you, 
that they will figure out a way to get you in their company. Because if you're that authentic and you're that good, they're going to figure out, okay, this is a great person, great business philosophy. She's awesome. How can we get her to work within our business units? So, um, you know, it just takes, you know, some time and meeting people. And our big philosophy is, you know, and I've said this before a lot of times, we would much rather have a long-term relationship with a client than to have a one night stand, as I call it. So it's better to make a little bit of money and do great work than it is to make a lot of money and only do one job. And as a result, in the last three months with State Farm, we have printed 18 different jobs for State Farm. And just yesterday, they asked us if we would be willing to do mailings for them, which goes through another whole security. So it's kind of getting to the next level now. So they, they really trust us and we just print and ship. That's all we do. And, but they like it. Congratulations, I hadn't heard that. And so that's kind of a good segue into my next question because really being a diverse vendor, just having that title as being a diverse vendor does not afford you any preferential treatment. No. Um, so, you know, you still have to be competitive. You still have to have a marketing plan um, and be, and really it kind of goes back to what you said, building a relationship as well. So um, you were fortunate enough to win a contract though at the matchmaking event. And since your relationship has pretty much ceased with the supplier diversity team and kind of segued to the business area, um, how do you um, make sure or what is your um, tactics to make sure that your service levels and that you're building those relationships in that, you know, you're obviously doing something well because you're getting more business. How are you staying on top of all of that? Communication is a big thing. So in terms of any business, everybody has to put on your customer service hat, no matter what. Anything that you do, you are customer service 100% through and through. So when we get a purchase order from State Farm, I immediately sent back a acknowledgement. We received the purchase order and we'll get started on it. And I, along the way, I will send emails back to the procurement team. We printed the job and I've called State Farm uh, Freight. They're gonna pick it up and they're gonna deliver early. We always deliver all of our stuff early. And I asked them, cause they give us like, a month and a half to print. And I'm like, we'll just take a week. We'll, we're good. And they're like, oh, oh, okay. So we're really big on communication. All along the way, we let them know every step that we're doing. We send an email back and they are so appreciative because then they don't have to contact us and ask the question. Because we know if we give them the answers, somebody internally at State Farm is going to say, hey, where's that job? Oh, well, here it is. I got it. I don't have to, I don't have to um, contact the vendor because I already have that information. So communication is number one. Yes, I love that. And I heard you mention that, you know, going to a second level. Um, and that's um, something that a lot of um, businesses have to realize too, is that you always want to be proactive and not reactive when you're once you do secure the business because just because you secured it and again you're a diverse vendor doesn't mean that we're we or companies are entitled to work with you so you still again do what you need to do um, some companies have scorecards that um, we score the vendors and you find out on the back end maybe if there was some issues with your service level but if you have practices and communications put in place such as sherry you're always in front of it you're always proactive rather than reactive and i can see that being successful in a long-term business relationship so thank you for that sherry yeah, I'll, just, I'll just say one other thing. So there was a situation that was recent and that this is what I'm talking about, about being authentic. Um, we got a job for 1.3 million um, brochures to print. And the market right now is pretty volatile on getting goods and services. And it's very, very difficult right now to secure paper for printing. Um, State Farm rec uh, 
you know, they always want everything on 80 pound doll tax. We, for the life of me, I tried for two weeks to get enough paper to print a job and I couldn't get it. So you have to be honest. And I had to go back to the procurement team and I said to them, hey, I, I can't get 80 pound text. I can't get it. There's none to be had in the time frame." And they came back and said, we understand. We know because we've talked to other printers. So can you get 70 pound? And I was able to get enough 70 pound for a one-time print job. Um, but that's being authentic to them and telling them up front, being honest and saying, I can't do this, but I have a solution and this is what I can do. And you're right, we, we still, when, we, when we're giving pricing back to State Farm, they're comparing our pricing to other vendors that they're currently using. But his comment back to me was, I would rather have you do the job on 70 pound because we love the quality and the, um, the communication that you're providing us. So to me, that, that says a lot about a partnership. Yep, partnership is key. So lastly, last question for you, because I'm gonna leave some time too for um, Cynthia, but from a supplier diversity perspective, I'll just talk about, you know, many uh, professionals in this industry are being contacted by organizations wanting the opportunity to work for larger organizations. Um, many times I can tell, or, you know, my peers can tell from a short conversation with a business that although the company pr may provide a product or service that may interest State Farm, the business may not be prepared or realize that they're not prepared to work for a company of this size. So Sherry, um, do you have any advice for those seeking to do business with larger corporations, things that they should think about or maybe even do before they even um, market themselves to larger corporations? Any advice you can give there? Yeah, um, be honest. I mean, if, if you look at, a, I mean, everybody wants to work with a large corporation um, because they think that that's like the best and, and sometimes it isn't um, sometimes working with smaller companies and then building up to the bigger company is best because you have a stepping stone or a segue um, if you're not prepared to handle a, a large client don't because if you fail you'll never ever ever learn their respect again ever so it's better to look at the organization as a whole and if you get in and they, they say, okay, we want you to do this, look at the specs or look at whatever they're asking you. And if you can't do it, then just tell them, we're just not equipped to do it right now because that'll carry a lot more weight than you trying to do something and fail because you're gonna fail them and you'll never, you'll never earn their trust. That's spot on, Sherry. Thank you for that. Is there any questions before? Go ahead. Yeah, so there is a question. So I was going to ask that before we make the transition over to Cynthia. So thank you okay. so much, Kimberly. Um, so, and so Kimberly, you can answer this. And then Cynthia, you can probably answer this once we transition to you as well. Then also know we have folks like uh, Tanya and Jeanette, if you want to drop something in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, so we got a question from Matt Tinney from WME. Matt asked, is it appropriate to ask a supplier diversity contact if they have a committed goal towards LGBTBEs? And if so, what is their goal spend for the year? So is it okay to ask them those two questions? Um, do you have a goal and what is it? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's fine to ask um, if, if, you know, what your focus, if there's a focus, if you have goals for most companies, you have multiple goals. It's just not in one area. Um, and then some, for some companies, maybe certain months, you're, you're more, um, inclined to a certain category over the other, typically wanting to know the percentage, um, for most companies, that's more proprietary information um, within, but you know, most people will be open to let you know um, what they can share and what they can't share. Perfect, thanks, Kimberly. Cynthia, you can answer the question, then we'll turn it over to you to share some final thoughts. Yes, I think it's really important to um, ask those questions 
as appropriate because it builds your intelligence about what, where the commitment lies within that particular corporation. So it doesn't hurt to ask, but as Kimberly mentioned, there is certain proprietary information that they can't share. And one thing I always advise my clients to do is research. Uh, you can go to your target, targeted corporations. You can go their website for their supplier diversity program. They will have a statement about their commitment. Uh, they often list the products and services they provide. So you can, you can determine if you do the research, you can determine if you'd be a good fit for that corporation. And then tailor your presentation to meet those specific needs that they've identified. Awesome, thanks, Cynthia. And then I think you have some final thoughts. Are you turning it over to me? I believe so. Okay, thank you. I am going to share my screen. Uh, hang on, give me a second. I hope I'm gonna share my screen. Here, I think here it comes. Oh, maybe I'm not. Okay. So let me not share my screen and just talk to some points. For those of you that don't know about the Women's Business Development Center, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization located in Chicago. We have branch offices throughout the Midwest and what we do uh, within the nine states in the Midwest that we serve is we certify women-owned businesses that are at least 51% owned, operated, and managed by a woman or women. We also work in very close collaboration with our sister organizations like NMSDC and the LGBT Chamber to make sure that we are sharing information about our certified businesses, providing access to our matchmakers and our events to give you exposure as a diverse firm to our corporate partners who are specifically looking to do business with certified diverse entities. In my role, I'm the director of our established business programs. So I work with our certified WBEs and I help them build scale to reach the capacity to be ready to do business with our major corporations who are partners to the WBDC. Uh, when it comes to uh, leveraging certification, and I think Sherry mentioned this and Kimberly did as well, it's always important to lead with your strengths. Uh, articulate your value proposition and, and your capabilities to meet the needs. And you can do that specifically if you've done the research on the corporation to better understand what they're looking for. So part of um, today's conversation is focusing on uh, post-contract activity. So I just wanted to highlight a few things. And this was mentioned um, already, but I wanna expand on it. It's Getting the contract is the beginning of building what you would hope would become a long-term business partnership, right? So they are understanding the value that you bring, solutions that you provide, problems that you solve, or most importantly, money you can save. When you have a contract, your performance executing that contract is really what differentiates you from your competition? Because the contract, you've competed for the contract, you've won it. After you've won it, you can begin building the relationship, looking for other opportunities to expand with that corporation through leading with your strengths. And also you can deepen that relationship. It, 
It may have started with the supplier diversity professional who introduced you to the decision maker. The supplier diversity representative doesn't make decisions, but they are an influencer. So you wanna be sure you understand how to manage that relationship. And then when you are awarded the contract, you will be working with someone in procurement or someone who is the business unit lead. So it's a different conversation. It's a different uh, opportunity to articulate your value proposition to those, those stakeholders within the corporation. So I think it's also very important for you to, to um, ask for a performance review. Kimberly mentioned some corporations have a business scorecard for their supplier. If they have that, that will be great. I mean, that is like your report card. That's where they identify opportunities for improvement or things that went very well, because the last thing you want is to be in a contract agreement and not know that the people that you are working with are dissatisfied with your services. You do not want to find that out at the end of the conversation. So if they are not initiating feedback with you, don't hesitate to ask them for performance feedback throughout the lifetime of that contract. Because it's, if you've got, gotten an award, it's easier to get additional opportunities with that corporation if you are constantly assessing where you are in terms of your performance. Also, we'll give you an opportunity to ask for referrals. Ask if there are other decision makers within the corporation that might utilize your services. If so, ask for an introduction to those folks. Uh, it's also an opportunity for you to ask about subcontracting opportunities. Maybe they have primes who need subcontractors that are diverse companies. So that's another um, pathway for you to deepen your relationship with the corporation that you've received an award from. So don't hesitate to ask for referrals. Look for opportunities as a subcontractor with the primes ask for the feedback, and most importantly, um, be honest. That was mentioned before. It is so important to be honest, be authentic. You know, sometimes you get into a contract and what you expect it to happen doesn't happen, and there's a need for a change order or a need for a price adjustment or a price increase because of freight changes or, like Sherry said, issues with... Um, supplies to, to successfully implement that contract. So be open, be honest, uh, leverage the opportunity, uh, build the relationship through leveraging your strengths as a reliable source that has capacity to work with the, the company that has awarded you that contract. Kimberly, were there some specific questions you wanted to address? We have a, a few more minutes. So, you know? yeah, so I will say, so thank you so much, Cynthia. So we do have one question in the chat box. And so this is probably the one that we can take. Um, and so uh, Cynthia, if you can answer this kind of shortly for us. We got a question from Bernadetta Hearns from We Apparel. Bernadetta asked, how do I become a certified African-American woman in business? And then I'm also hoping you can answer separately. I know people don't always notice there's a difference in terms of the sort of the corporate certification than the government certification. So um, if you could briefly talk about how you could certify as an African-American woman, then the I'd be happy to do that. Uh, there are many different types of certification. So if you are an African-American female, as Bernadette is, you want to look at what certification is going to be most advantageous to you. We Bank, the organization that I work for, the Women's Business Development Center, we certify women-owned businesses. We're a third-party certification for a national organization. Uh, the National uh, Chicago CMSDC certifies minority companies, minority-owned companies. Both of our certifications are similar, but our corporate partner members are different. Some overlap, but some are different. 
So if you, you want to think strategically because the application process is very extensive. You have to pull together a ton of documents. We charge uh, a base of $350 to process the application if your revenues are under a million dollars. The WBDC is also a procurement technical assistance center, which means we have resources available to you. We have team members who are experts in helping you identify contract opportunities with government agencies. That would include federal, state, city, county, and local. So it really depends on who you are targeting. And personally, I recommend that you start with one and you learn how to navigate that process. You get involved with their matchmaker events, you attend their webinars, get your arms around working uh, their certification and then perhaps move on to the next one. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, cheers to this. Uh, I don't know if everybody was as was excited as I was about this all-star women power panel, but I was super excited about it. So thanks to all of you so much for sharing your wisdom, um, sharing your experiences with us. Sherry, huge congratulations to you um, on the work that you've been able to do, that new contract opportunity that you got yesterday. And it sounds like so much more hopefully coming down the pipeline for you. Thank you. And we're glad to be a partner and just to be a fan of yours. And so, Kimberly, thanks to you and State Farm for being a partner and sponsor for our event today. And then, Cynthia, we always love working with you, and I know that we'll see you very soon. Um, Thank you. And I'll put my email address in the chat. If anyone wants to reach out to me to learn more, because our time was so limited, I'm happy to um, work with you one on one. Perfect. And everyone, I will be sharing contact for all these individuals in the wrap up as well. Um, so thanks, everyone. Um, we'll be starting our next session here in just a couple of minutes. So I'll yeah. see you in the next room, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy, Bye. for the opportunity. As always. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.